Hi right, guys, um, a bit of a weird camera angle for this video, but ignore, ignore the things going on in the background. A lot of people have been asking me uh, of late about um, pep sheet maintenance and stuff with 3D printers and, and whatnot, and when is it okay to um, replace your pep sheet. Um, this is my my resin vat. Mm, yes, giggity. Um, and when you 3D print a model, if the supports are not done correctly, they will cause air pockets or suction cups. And what that does is that will then pull on the FEP sheet, okay? And you can hear it as it's printing. You'll hear a boom. You'll, you'll, you'll hear it. You'll physically hear it suctioning and pulling on the FEP sheet and your FEP sheet or FEP sheet for sure um, only has a certain amount of tensile strength and if it exceeds that 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 strength you'll get what looks like little white lightning bolts going through that's the actual FEP sheet weakening internally not externally so the outside layer the bottom side layer will look silky smooth but inside Okay, inside the FEP sheet, it's actually split and there's a pocket of air in there. Okay, and the more it gets pulled on either side, okay, the worse the tear will get, the worse the tear will get until you've peeled apart both laminates of the FEP sheet. Okay, now you not, might not be able to see it, but here on this FEP sheet, there's a tear here and a tear here okay because what's happened is and it also depends on the size of the print um the supports of the print that there's there's a whole host of factors that come into it not just what software you use not what sort of models you're printing or kind of kind of resin you're using it it's this is why i always run my models through another program called uv tools UV tools will actually scan your print beds, i.e. The, the support bed where your model is attached to on a resin printer for these suction cups and try its best to pixel shift your supports. Not by much, just like a pixel or two so that the resin has and the air has a chance to escape. So you get less suction, less tension, less less um, overhang, less... It, it, it's, this is why I cannot recommend UV tools enough. Plus the software is constantly being updated. I've seen it update as be as updated as at least three times in like a, a day or two. So they're constantly on the ball. They're constantly updating for new printers, new new firmwares, new name. You name it, the software, and it's free. Do not ever pay for UV tools. Okay, UV tools is free. You can get it on GitHub. Okay, now I'm looking at my monitor here with my webcams over here. So if you're wondering why my face is this way, but my eyes are this way, you understand. I'm trying to pseudo read a script, but uh, never pay for UV tools. It's free. Okay, UV tools is free. You can donate to the coder. I have donated to the coder. I think I've, I've thrown him like 30 or 40 bucks now um, because sometimes I'll just go, you know, what? you've earned an extra 10 from me because it saved a 3D print from going completely tits up on me and destroying a, 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 a FEP sheet, a printer, you name it. Now, currently, my printers, one of my printers is down because, again, the leveling bed is a has a manufacturer's defect. I'm trying to talk to Vox Lab about getting a replacement from them, but that's basically like trying to piss in at the wind and not get wet. It's almost impossible to talk to them because they, their Chinglish is horrible. Uh, it's a Chinese-based company. Um, so... They need to hire some native English speaking support staff. They just do, but is what it is. Um, and so when your FEP sheet gets like this, you can use it for small prints, like weapons, arms, things of that nature, um, some small terrain pieces, but things like bases, uh, um, case in point, things like trying to print like this. No. No. Um, this is a multiple print. The guns, separate print. Torsos were all separate prints. Um, base was separate print. Gun arm was a separate print. The legs were all separate printed and put together. Um, it took me like 19 prints and change. But I built it together like a, a Lego kit kind of thing. Like you're supposed to with a regular model. But I, like I said, that's that's just 
a display piece to go on the website and it just the tools just fell off that's fine but point is guys um when your fep sheet gets this damaged replace it now a lot of people when they're when they are replacing a fep sheet they kind of get nervous now i'm gonna move to get a little bit better light in real quick give us a second here guys all right so you'll be able to see what i'm, I'm doing in essence all right so um and yes this is the microphone i'm using so let me just put my hand um now i'm gonna move it down now so you're mostly focusing on the fep sheet now the fep sheet um in fact you can actually see it a lot clearer now um the cracks and stuff um if i put it upon a black background you might be able to see it a little bit better there you go you can actually visibly see the cracks and you can even feel them now um so that tells me that um the sheet needs to be replaced now depending on your manufacturer um igloo vox lab um satin there's a whole bunch of other manufacturers that all use industry standard parts um case in point is the fep sheets now in here is a bunch of fep sheets that i've pre I, i've bought months down the line and i kept them just to to have them on the off chance that i have to replace my fep sheets uh so yay uh also you're gonna need a stanley blade set fresh blade always use a fresh blade now you're thinking why are you going to need a stanley blade because you have to cut your fep sheets to size now a 5.5 inch and a 6 inch printer will take the exact same sheet size i know that sounds a bit weird just it it, it is what it is guys it, it just it is what it is now um things like an 8.9 or a 9 inch are, are completely different you need a different uh, fep sheet now you can buy them directly from the companies or you can buy them um uh, or, or you can buy them from amazon or other places like that now they're literally the same they're, there's nothing they are literally identical even the, the bar, serial barcodes the same so these are the same from the same manufacturer just packaged differently so i always keep them in their original package card because you want to keep the fep sheet straight you don't want to buy a fep sheet on a reel because it's cur like i said you don't want to do that you want to keep this as straight as you can um because if you get it curved or whatnot there's a high chance that it's gonna have warping and cracking and whatnot always have some paper towel ready and always have some isopropyl alcohol ready now i am just going to do a little bit of cleanup on this with some ipa now you should also wear gloves it's just i'm used to handling this i know that this resin's not going to hurt me because like i said i'm used to handling this chemical i've not had a chemical reaction from it um it doesn't mean you're not going to it just means that if you start getting chemical reactions from it um swap it out also you can also swap spot a poor company um doing a bad job when the laminate paint that they put on it is peeling up just from isopropyl alcohol touching it um, ipa is a cleaning and a dehydrant agent it's also used for killing bacteria uh, so of course you're going to need your medium-sized uh allen wrench for this and you're going to want to see you don't need to crank it down this isn't a cylinder head on a v8 you know you don't have to do like 90 foot pounds or 100 foot pounds you're not turbocharging this thing so it just needs to hold tension not um pressure so there's a big difference between tension and pressure now it also a lot of people will go crosswise because again this isn't a cylinder head guys you don't need to do that um you may want to do that after you've got the initial run in with the threads with with, with the, the the bolts also check the bolts for corrosion um i know the first batch of, of uh, screws that came out with certain printers were of a substandard grade of steel and they rusted right up like crazy and the heads mushroomed and it was almost impossible to get them out to change the fep sheet some people would end up sending them back to the manufacturer 
and the manufacturer would literally drill and tap uh, um, the screw just to try and get them out you know and it was like it's a manufacturer's defect of course the manufacturer didn't want to admit fault so you know sorry it doesn't it's not covered by your warranty okay what does my warranty cover uh exactly this is why when you buy a 3d printer buy it from a company that's reputable that has a history and i'm not talking about one or two years okay i mean there are companies out there i know for a fact that um atmel the, the the chip company they're getting ready to start making their own um uh resin and ftm printer controller boards if i see an atmel chip on that printer i know that that printer can take some nice custom firmware it can take a whole bunch of really cool things um so you know it, it helps and that's another thing don't be afraid to open up the printer and look at the guts um now and that's the frame and so of course there is trapped resin on the inside of the frame there's going to be trapped resin on the inside of the frame guys there's nothing you can do about that um because it's just how this the seals work there's no true technical o-rings reason why there's no technical o-rings is because the rubber in the o-rings would uh get eaten away by the resin so you can't technically o-ring it now what i'm doing is just putting this down here so it's off the bench so that I can actually, well, off the table, so I can focus on this part. Now you'll notice that the FEP sheet has become extremely like a thunder, thunder sheet, you know, it's like, and then there was thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Yeah, because the tension that was put on by these screws is now off. Again, tension is the key word, not torque. We're not, again, we're not looking to hold down a cylinder head, okay? We're not, we're just not. Now, also, FEP sheets will stretch. Okay, they will stretch over time. So it's always good to it's always good to replace your FEP sheet every hmm, six months to a year. It, dep it depends on how often you print. If you print every day, uh, like nonstop, then yeah, you're gonna have to change it at least every two months, um, or even a month. It depends on the size of the printer, the and the size of the print and the, the files and like i said there's a whole slew of reasons as to why now we're using the really really tiny allen key um most the actual long necked key that came with this kit um is long gone it 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 went walkies but luckily for me i found a key that fits in an old tall key set um so yeah i, I lucked out and so I do, I do have another Allen key. It's in a bag over there. Let me let me go grab it just for sake of simplicity, real quick. Now, because I have multiple printers from the same manufacturer, uh, VoxLab in this case, I get a lot of their um, their parts are interchangeable. Again, there's no need for these to be this tiny. There we go. <laughs> and. Like I said, I'm just going to rant here. So if you want to fast forward this bit, you're going to miss out on a little bit of a rant about certain things about printers. So if you want to stay and listen, stay and listen. It's fine. Um, I am looking, I am on the market for a bigger printer for an eight to nine inch printer. That will allow me to start printing much bigger uh, proxy stuff. Um, and I'm also in the middle of revamping my website. I was using Wix. And when I've got time, I will swap it over to probably Squarespace. And then that way I'll be able to do things like host my streams and stuff on my website as well as other things. Just, I don't know yet. I, I just, I don't know yet what I'm going to be doing. All right. So what I'm going to do is actually just 
loose torque these. And again, you've got to be careful not to strip. So always, always examine the screws and keep an eye on them. Voxlab does supply you with like one spare screw of each. Only the one, mind you. And if it was up to me, I would swap these hex heads out for regular screws. Um, I really would. I'd swap them out for regular screws. Because hex heads are just a pain in the ass. They strip too easy. And like I said, all I'm doing is just breaking the seals on them, loosening them up a little bit. There we go. See, now it's getting a lot easier. See, that one just wanted to come out. And so what we're going to do now here in a bit is a lot of people will want to um, when it comes to 3D printing a lot of people just don't want to do this. A lot of people just want to go buy STL click print. You know, literally just put it on a, put it on a geek cord on a, on a thumb drive or send it to my printer through my network and then print it go burr. Um, they don't want to know the fact that you need to do maintenance on your printers. Well, they're also the same sort of people that mechanics gouge for, you know, £3,000 to do an oil change on a car when you can do it yourself for less than £30. And that's the cost of the filter and the oil that you pick up at your local freaking Halfords. You know, it's... They just don't want to do the work, you know, they're too fucking lazy, pardon my French. And I hate lazy people, but if you are a 3D printer enthusiast like I am, I, I'm enjoying 3D printing. I'm enjoying it. Um, so this is our old FEPG. Now I keep these around for a few days to, evaluate, to evaluate where the, the predominant of the damage is on the print. And then the first thing I'm going to do is grab a small print, like a small model, and print it as a test to make sure that the bed's leveled and a few other things. And now I'm just going over the seal and making sure that the seal is good. Now, what I'm going to do is grab our... Brand new, this is our old FEP sheet. And yeah, you can, when you hold it up to the light, well, away from the light, I should say, um, you can see, there we go. You can see now, you can see, now you can see the, the, um, the damage in the center. Now, if this was to split, okay, if this was to split, all that resin inside that vat would go all over the screen or down the side of the printer and ask me how horrible that is to clean up because that's actually happened in fact it cost me two screens two screens because i did not do my due diligence i did not do my maintenance and it cost me two screens and each screen was 60 60 pounds a pop yeah they're not cheap the screens are not cheap all right so let's see Normally there's like a sealed end, you can just like pull up a tab and then out it comes. But I'm not seeing it. So did they vacuum seal this? Yes, they did. Typical. And so we're going to carefully take out our scalpel. And just nick the top like that. There we go. And then we're going to take out a FEP sheet. Now these come in packs of five usually, five or six. Now as you can see, this one has got dual protective layers on it, which is good. Again, depending on the manufacturer, depending on where you buy your FEP sheets, will depend on the quality you've got, um, how well it will last etc 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 now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to place it with the still with with the seal still on just hear me out now i'm placing it down to see roughly where my overcut's going to be now most people will put it in the center like this 
and then just cut around and that is the biggest royal pain in the ass you could ever imagine your best bet is to just shift it like so now you know that this is a straight edge and that this is a straight edge so then all you've got to worry about is two corners not four okay use your loaf right so now i'm going to peel away the protective layers these are to prevent dust and and whatnot from sticking and, and a whole bunch of other stuff and so i'm just going to leave that there for now okay now we're just going to lay it down gently again handling it with care means that you do care okay and we're just going to line it up like so take our over frame take our over frame down so now we're forming a, a pseudo gasket of sorts now i'm not cutting it notice i'm not not immediately cutting it no 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 no, no. i'm now going to separate the screws that i accidentally piled together because i'm a twat And so now I'm going to take my little. Now again, I'm not putting a lot of force down. You can look at my fingers. My fingers aren't changing color. I'm not putting force down. I'm just holding the frame in place and allowing this screw to bite. Sometimes they won't bite. Sometimes, see, sometimes they do. When they do bite, you just hold. You took a few rotations. Double check. Okay, it slid, it slid on me a little. It's like I said, there's no pressure. I'm not putting any pressure down. Now I'm just stopping this from turn from from shifting on me on the torque of my, my motion of my hand. Okay, and that's it. And I'm gonna take another one and put it in the corner over here, right there. And then rinse and repeat and then once i've gotten at least four screws in so i can i've got all four corners pseudo cinched i will then go around with a very sharp exacto blade and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about okay just a little nothing much so i'm going to put one in up here and then one down here like so and if you're the sort of person that has the memory of a goldfish, um, record yourself. Do what I'm doing right now. Record yourself. And most importantly, and this is this is the key, this is the key point. Okay, most importantly, okay, don't be afraid to 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 watch YouTube videos to learn and educate. If you're new here, please hit the follow button. I greatly appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button. Again, I greatly appreciate it. Um, I don't just do 3D printing content, I also do video game content on the channel. Um, I'm an all-round gamer, both tabletop and uh, PC. I do own a PS3, eh, mostly to emulate it, but I do have a PS3. Uh, I am somewhat getting into um, uh, crypto mining. I was thinking about getting some old graphics cards and giving it a little poke. Right, so now we've pseudo cinched down the frame. Take your sharp exacto blade. Can okay, I bear in mind if you are a miner? have an adult do this hell if you're a miner you shouldn't be doing this at all but now what you want to do is lift up the frame okay and then you want to always cut away from yourself but come down and hug the frame like so okay and again cut away from yourself okay again i'm gonna go down mark the frame okay and then like so and all you got is these little corner bits to do corner bits are easy to do again you just follow the frame let the blade do the work okay now, a lot of people are like, why didn't you just tension it all the way down? Because I don't need to. I have the, the frame tensioned using those four screws. Okay. 
So now it's a lot less work to do. There we go. And so now I can actually finish tensioning up this. Again, pull it the cap back on the exacto. You don't need it now. You're done with the exacto. You don't need it. Okay. And then you can start wherever you want. And then once you start feeling resistance, like proper resistance, just stop. You don't need to you don't need to, to talk this down. This isn't a freaking like I said, this isn't a cylinder head on a V8. You don't need to talk these down. You don't need a, a, a torque wrench. You don't need any of that. That okay. Now another thing that you can also do to make it to make your life easier. Now notice how I'm having a hard time trying to get this screw to bite. Okay, what you can do, just take your Allen head and pop the sheet. And in that way, the screw will just bite. Now you're going to make me out to be a liar. Come on. Fine. Different screw then. Sometimes the screws are just don't want to go in. There we go. This one just bit. Love a Jiminy Cricket. All you've got to do is just go in and stay in. No, you're going to get one or two that are stubborn, so you know what, sod you, I'll move on to the next. Yeah, same screw, different hole. Let's see. We'll see if it's the screw or the hole. There we go. That was the screw. Where's well, the hole? Alright. Round two, Mr. Screw. And <laughs> it just pops right in. <laughs> Oh, typical. And so, like I said, you can pop them, not pop them, doesn't matter. Um, they're going to get popped anyway, um, because the way, the way you're, you're cinching down the screw, you know. So the moment the screw bites, it will start putting tension on the FEP sheet and then go right through it, see. So you can pop it, don't pop it. I know of a lot of people that say, don't pop them, don't pop them, don't ever pop them. It's like, it's like, okay, if you've got a zit, are you going to pop it or are you not going to pop it? You know? I know dermatologists are like, no, no, don't pop it. But it's always fun to pop a zit. You know, if you ever get one. I don't really get them anymore, but you get what I'm saying. It's always fun. I mean, it's why people watch those really gross YouTube channels where it's like, watch me drain this boil. I really don't want to. Is that custard? <laughs> Uh, my ex, my ex girlfriend used to watch those sort of videos all the time, and it used to just gross me the hell out. Bear in mind this big bad soldier who, you know, saw combat and stuck my hand in someone's chest just to make sure that their heart kept beating, gets uh, grossed out by a little uh, zit. So yeah, now see, I'm not popping them anymore, and they're just falling right into place. And just rotate it now obviously you, you want to do this in a nice um clean area you don't want to do this by your printers where you got excess you know resin spills or whatnot now if you do happen to spill your resin okay another safety tip if you do happen to spill your resin one don't panic okay a lot of people are like oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit, oh, shit. Like, they spilt sulfuric acid don't panic okay everything's going to be fine as long as it's not in direct sunlight, you're going to be fine. Now, why do I say that? Because UV light, I'm going to stab my FEP sheet there. Uh, UV curing resin only gets cured with UV light, i.e. the sun. Or if you're like me and you have one of those UV flashlights, a UV flashlight. Otherwise, it's going to stay in its resin form. Now, it might separate because it's a two-part um, chemical process you need the hardener you need the actual chemical the, the resin itself 
again resin models are very similar to like green stuff green stuff won't activate until you take both parts and knead them together vigorously okay well the same thing with resin you have to shake it very violently to get them to to catalyst uh well to, to, act, to activate sorry and the catalyst that hardens them is uv light well if you haven't shaken it vigorously it's fine and if you haven't got it in direct sunlight or in front of a direct uv light again it's not going to harden so you can in fact clean it up with simple ipa with simple isopropyl alcohol okay now the stronger the ipa the quicker it will cut through the the, the chemical the quicker it will, you'll be able to, to clean it up with a paper towel and i do suggest you use a paper towel not a terry cloth not a microfiber cloth the reason why is because the microfiber cloth will absorb the resin okay both chemical parts and you won't know it until you leave it out and sunlight hits it and all of a sudden you've got a, a uh, rigid <laughs> uh, uh, um, microfiber cloth that's not good for anything anymore but a brillo pad i mean literally you could use it as a sander um so yeah so always use paper towels um especially the, if you can get them the lint free paper towels now they are a little bit more expensive but to me they're worth it now you're probably looking at the, the some of you are probably like eyeing the fep sheet and realizing hang on it's, it's got some ripples and stuff in it yes it's gonna have ripples in it the reason why it's gonna have ripples in it is because like before we've not put it in the master frame to tension it all this frame does is hold it together in essence what i'm building is a fep gasket if you if you for, for the lack of the term so what i'm building right now is a gasket again i'm trying to keep my hand clear so you can see what i'm doing okay now again i'm not over tightening i'm not wrenching it down like it's like it like i said like it's a cylinder head on a v8 you know this isn't an engine you know you don't need uh, uh to, to truly wrench the thing down in order for it to, to hold liquid okay now i know there was a 3d printer that was designed to have disposable fep sheets literally once your fep sheet was used up to a certain point you just pull it out throw it in rubbish um but obviously you know with the whole green new deal blah 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 that won't go in anywhere so yeah I believe was it i want to say it was rust no it wasn't igloo it wasn't igloo that came up with it well and it wasn't satin satin's got um sorry igloo's got those um carbon filter usb powered carbon filter thingies that uh, reduce the, the smell of the resin curing all right, so one, two, two more screws, three more screws. So once this is done, we're going to put it in the master frame or the vat holder. See, right now, this is just the FEP gasket, what I've just built. Okay, FEP gasket. Resin vat. Okay. This is what holds your resin. Well, what? Store, well, you're not, don't use it to store your resin. Okay. Once you're done with the print, okay, if you're not going to use your printer like immediately again, okay, drain it, clean it, and, and, and that way when you are ready to print again, you just plug in your, your thumb drive with your file in it. Pour some, you know, shake up some resin, pour it in, turn it on, and set it and forget it, kind of thing, you know. That's what I do. Uh, sometimes, if I have a, if I've had a failed print, I want to analyze why it failed. Where did it fail? Um, now, this, this, this FEP sheet in, in, in that we're that we're getting ready here is going on my six-inch printer that's always had bed issues. Um, not bed issues, sorry, uh, screen issues. 
i.e. I've gone through three or four screens now on it and this new screen I've got um, has got issues where one side of it it's usually the side it's the side over by where you can pour out your resin so which side is that one yeah, it's this side so a good a good five mil three mil of this um fep sheet i can't print on which is quite tragic now sadly you can see some fingerprints but don't worry about that we're about to sort that out now this is where we take the gasket which is what we just made and attach it to the frame okay now again yes i did just poke a hole in the air it's going to get a hole poked in it anyway now all i'm doing is just using it to hold the frame down the moment i see this corner come up i know it's holding the frame down okay now this is what i like to do other people may vary okay you may vary yes i am holding down the frame just so that this screw can bite okay now you're going to see the tension change okay now is it wibbling no in fact, now there's a lot of tension just with those two screws. Okay. And when you put more screws in it, those two screws and all the previous screws that you put in are going to lose tension. So you're going to have to go back around in a clockwise pattern and tension them, retention them. Not much, just like maybe a quarter turn, half turn. Okay. So the moment I see it, get pulled in as you can see i'm not doing anything i'm literally just watching it get pulled together like a sandwich okay i'm gonna stop because now this corner needs to get done so up <laughs> almost like a snare drum and that's the thing you want to keep it as, it's about as tight as a snare drum it's, and that's another thing a lot of people keep asking me is how tight do i need to make it you don't need to make it super tight okay just as tight as a regular snare drum okay and if you're a musician or you know someone who's a musician ask them how tight is a snare drum they'll tell you okay so now i can come over here again this is the only part that takes them the, unscrewing the thing is the one that take that, that takes the longest and I'm not even joking. Um, and it's a pain in the patootie. But this is how you change a FEP screen. Okay. Once it's changed, clean it up using um, dry PTFE, WD-40. Okay. You can use this or there is... You can get uh, Add It Multi Loop again with PTFE. As long as it's got PTFE in it because... When you print, the prints will pull some PTFE out of the sheet, which is what causes the sheet. To, again, the more damage can be done to the sheet that way. The more maintenance you do, the longer your stuff's going to last, you guys. Sheets, printers, screens, you name it. Um, I just have to find a screen that doesn't get destroyed by my, my, my six-inch printer. But, you know, it is what it is um but hopefully here soon we will be getting a used uh nine inch um i want to say what one is it nine inch one second let me because it's in my amazon wish list it's loading right now uh it is the flash forge photo nine inch um i happen to have found one used on amazon um so i'm not expecting it to be a hundred hundred percent but i'm expecting it to at least be usable um to an extent that is all right and then so yeah hopefully fingers crossed guys we will be using a bigger printer to make some bigger models um i do have uh, I'm going to 3D print a Terminator 2 skull for myself, 
and actually put red LEDs in the eyes and work on putting some servos in it and stuff so that it sits on my desk and will follow you. Um, which means I'm going to get to start coding some Arduino again and, and that'll be fun. Watch it freak out my roommates. And maybe have it hooked up to my uh, Alexa or something. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And so now, guys, all I'm going to do is once this one goes in, you're going to see the tension change. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Now. Yes, you can over tighten. Yes, it, see, now this screw just came straight up. Okay, now look. Two fingers. See? And that was the first one. That was the first screw that we put in. Why? Because the tension shifted. So you want to go through just a couple of turns, which means this one's going to come loose. Which means this one's going to come loose. See? Because we're shifting the tension down and around in a circle till it gets back to this screw and then we know that we've got a good seal <laughs> it's that easy guys a lot of people think it's some sort of voodoo and it's like no i'm taking the voodoo out of 3d printing for you guys so there you go again i just want to go a couple of turns till i start feeling some tension Oh yeah, this one's way out of tension. There we go. There we go. Yeah, see the tension's clamped down now. Ooh, you was a loose little goose. There we go. Loose little goose. And another loose little goose. Back to the original screw, which requires little to no tension. And that's it. She is on. And that, this is the tension of a snare drum. Okay. And so now we've got a plain new FEP sheet on. So what I'm going to do is spritz it with some FEP on this side. Clean paper towel, not this used one that we used earlier. So we're going to take some clean paper towel. I'm just going to fold it like this and then just go across and back. You don't want to go in circles. And then on the inside, again, a little spritz, a new FE, new paper towel sheet, just the one. We're going to fold it, and fold it, and fold. You can even hear the static. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is new. <laughs> A new FUP sheet. So you can turn something like this. There's the old one. You can turn something as old as tat old and tatty in and, and this is will will eventually start causing you print failures to this beautiful thing. And that's it guys so hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a like a thumbs up and a subscribe and i'll see you in the next one